it's really important when we are studying the impact and effects of government policies to tackle market failure, in this case, we're thinking about indirect taxes, that we really stop to think about the range of stakeholders that are likely to be affected and how. This is really important, not only for our analysis, but also when we're starting to think about evaluation. So what we have in this short activity, which will probably take you five to 10 minutes of thinking time at home, we're going to be thinking about the impact of different government policies on the different stakeholders uh, outlined on the screen there for you. So we've got eight key uh, sort of segments of stakeholders, uh, businesses, customers, employees, shareholders, the government, trade unions, suppliers, and the broader community. Your task is to think about how you might segment those groups into smaller subgroups. So we've done the first one there for you as an example, uh, businesses. So instead of just thinking about the impact on business, you could, for example, think about the impact on firms that are exporters versus those, for example, that might serve just the domestic market. We might be able to think about monopolies, large dominant firms versus very small, highly competitive firms in competitive markets. Um, or alternatively, you could think about manufacturers actually making tangible goods versus firms that operate in the service sector. So just take a couple of minutes to pause the video and see if you can think about how you might segment each of those types of stakeholder into smaller subgroups. Then you can restart the video and take a look at some of our suggestions. Okay, so hopefully you can see on the screen there now for you some suggested answers. It's absolutely okay if you've come up with some of your own. It just means that you then have more ideas to think about. So moving on to looking at customers, you could look at the difference between, for example, single person versus multi-person households and how income and spending choices might be different. Um, high income versus low income households. Again, you're thinking about the income elasticity of demand. Uh, that might have some sort of bearing on how we look at the uh, impact of different policies. Employees, uh, those who might be salaried on hourly wage contracts or zero hours contracts. Uh, Full timers versus part timers. Shareholders, you could be looking at whether they're institutions, for example, the big pension funds, um, individual shareholders, or whether we're actually looking at a PLC uh, where the uh, shares are traded publicly or a limited firm. Looking at the bottom line there of the graphic, uh, governments, you could look at uh, the different approaches taken by right wing or left wing governments. Uh, the impact that it has on government policy, if they have a majority or a minority in parliament, uh, trade unions, uh, you know, the, in the sense what we call the trade union density. So the proportion of workers in an industry who are actually uh, members of a union. Um, you could also look at unions that interact mostly with the private sector or the public sector. Suppliers, thinking about supply chains. Uh, thinking about domestic or overseas. Um, you might also think about the extent to which there might be monopsony power. In other words, the extent to which they just have to accept the price dictated to them by the companies to which they supply um, and the extent to which there is an integrated supply chain. And finally, if we're going to consider the community, we could take a look at the very local community, regional, national, international. So final piece of advice here, always just stop to think about the impact of a policy, whether that's indirect tax or something else, on a range of stakeholders.